Hi, this is Michael Azarad, Editor-in-Chief of The Talk House, and welcome to The Talk House Music Podcast. You just heard a little bit of celebrated Australian rocker Courtney Barnett covering the Breeders' 1993 classic Cannonball for the AV Club's Undercover series back in July of 2014. In an interview about why she chose to play that song, Barnett said that they would crank it on the stereo to get psyched for the sessions for her widely acclaimed 2015 debut album, Sometimes I Sit and Think, and Sometimes I Just Sit. And so it made all the sense in the world to pair her up for a TalkHouse Music podcast with the Breeders' Kim Deal. Kim, of course, is one of the more inspiring and visionary musicians to emerge from indie and alternative rock of the 80s and 90s. First, she played bass in the Pixies, then went on to even greater success with the Breeders. The Breeders made a tremendous impact on the sound and attitude of 90s alt-rock. And it seems they also made something of an impact on the sound and attitude of Courtney Barnett's rock. These two different generations of indie rockers spoke via Skype. Courtney was on tour in a hotel room in Milwaukee, and Kim was in her hometown of Dayton, Ohio. You can tell that they get a kick out of each other. Kim was obviously really curious about Courtney and has a bunch of questions for her. And then Courtney has a few that really gave Kim some pause. At one point, Courtney says, are we getting deep? The answer is yes. Here we go. How's it going? Oh, good. I'm in Dayton, Ohio. Uh-huh. Um, and it's really pretty close to you. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you're, are you in Wisconsin? Um, I just got to Milwaukee. Right. So you're, you're not, I mean, we're not that far away, you know? Oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, eight hours or something, but that's not <laughs> bad, you know, in this big country, you know? Well, I, I just had the shortest plane trip of my, my life. It was 18 minutes long. Bullshit, you're lying. Yeah. I didn't even know you could do that. No. It was from, um, where do we come from? Uh, Kansas City. Are you sure there was in a time change? Oh, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, like we passed Chicago. We came from Chicago to here. Oh, no kidding. Really? Yeah. It was like, you're taking off? Okay, we're descending. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it was weird. What were anyway. you doing in Chicago? It was just a stopover. It was we. It, we came from Kansas the night before. We played a gig, right? Yeah. When when did you do the uh, Jimmy Fallon thing? Was it that that seems like the news is on the computer right now? So it seems like it happened last night. Yeah, we did it um, three nights ago, I think. Oh. It's it's a bit yeah. It it feels like it was yesterday. Oh. It's a pretty surreal thing. Did you watch it? Yes, I did. It was oh. very good. You were on the TV a lot too. Is that weird? Do you watch it? Um, I I did watch it, yeah, but I don't have a TV at home, so I watch I watch on my TV in in hotels on on tour. But yeah, it's it's funny. It's funny seeing yourself on TV. <laughs> <laughs> It was actually really good, you know. It can be quite. It can go. Things can go horribly wrong on TV, in a oh, way yeah. that, yeah, in a way that's not something that I usually have to to deal with. It's like, oh, and it's just I don't know. It's odd. Have you ever had anything go terribly wrong? No, just like the. I mean, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes, we did. The Breeders did something on I think maybe David Letterman with a drum it was fun it was I mean it was funny because there's a it doesn't matter but it looked like the drummer who was he was allocated to just using like a shaker yeah which we we didn't mind we thought that was part of the gag of being on a late night show yeah the drummer can't actually play the drum set he just can do the shaker because we got these fellas the the, <laughs> the old studio session players yeah. Playing the music, you know, helping us play the music. So it was fun, but it and but lie, but on the TV it looks like he was beating off, like jacking <laughs> off, because you couldn't see what that he was holding a shaker. Just every time you saw him, you could see his arm and wrist moving <laughs> up and down, starting from below his crotch and going up. So he got a lot, 
Everybody oh, at the man. airport greeted him and laughed at him. His family, his dad laughed <laughs> at him. He remembers it. Uh, that's just a cameraman having a lot of fun, <laughs> surely. I don't, I don't know. That's there was a lot. <laughs> I don't know if he did it on purpose, but there was just a lot of elements. I think it just, it was just, I think it was just live TV, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're really busy, aren't you? Um, yeah, we, we've been doing a lot of shows. We're just doing a couple with, um, with Bill and Sebastian and then, and then we go in, in like two days, we go to the UK and kind of have time off. I booked, I booked this nice looking studio, um, with lots of greenery and trees around it. And, um, I think we're just going to hang out there (laughs) for a couple of days. So that'll be nice. Um, what's the name of the studio? Or do you don't have to Oh, say? I don't know, actually. It's written down somewhere. It looks looks kind of, looks nice. looks big and a, nice. But it's a recording studio? Yeah, but just with no pressure to to do anything, you know? Because, yeah, nice. yeah, just see what happens. Maybe mm-hmm. me, me and the boys in, in my band can just sit in there and make some stuff up. Yeah. Should be fun. Should be fun. You know, um, you went to Head Gap. You know, I've been to Head Gap. No way. Yes. When was that? When were you in Melbourne last? 2010. Oh, actually, I know when it was because I wanted to go see you. <laughs> it was, was it for ATP? No, not ATP. Um, no. Uh, I other- think it, was it Pixies? Yes. We were, I was in the Pixies and we were doing some shows there. Oh, and and okay. I st- and and then everybody went home and I stayed in Australia, and I got some people and we went into Head Gap and recorded a song. Wow! Yes. What was, I, what was the song? I never released it. I thought you know I thought it sounded good and I was liking it. I was really into this um, <laughs> kind of, you know. In the 70s, I was driving around in my dad's Cadillac and he has a tape <laughs> recorder and the cassette recorder has mellow moods from the 70s. So I was hearing all of these songs in my head. I mean, it was in the car, like the George Jones and, you know, you know, the. Uh, um, it's the romantic. uh with the tented sunglasses and the mutton chop, so it's the outlaw romantic, like the George Jones and and yeah. uh, but their like their hair's a little sprayed and stuff like that. So I was listening nice. to some of that stuff. So I thought that I could do something like that. Anyway, it sounded I thought it sounded good, and I brought back the recording. My sister said, "Kim, it sounds a bit toothless." <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, "You did not." And so I haven't done anything with it. But but you obviously uh, you took her her word for for something. Well, yeah? it's, a, it's a bit of a stunning. <laughs> it's a bit of a stunning thing. It's okay, Kim. It's just a bit toothless. <laughs> We've had we. It did end up being released on a sol, as a solo instrumental. She just always hated the words. Even if I we, even when I when I played drums on and played guitar in a four four beat, not a country wall, she still said I hate the lyrics and I hate the melody line. And I and so and she usually doesn't hate stuff. So, do you find that when you write a song, you you um, like, and you get the the melody and the lyrics, then you and you hate it, you can't change it. <laughs> like it's hard to to move on to something else. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I it mean? Is. Yeah, definitely. Because you always come back to it and sing that same thing, even if you even if you do actually hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. What's I really like that instrumental um, thing that you do on the um, I don't know what it's called. It's it's on the the seven inch songs. Is it? Um, th- I guess one of them. Th- then the other instrumental one is um, Dirty Hessians. The that one. I don't know. It was really soft and pretty. It didn't stand, it didn't stand like that. <laughs> that's, the that's the song, then. That's the song that I'm talking about. That really? song has lyrics and a melody line and everything. So you recorded yeah. that song at Head Gap? 
Yes. Oh, no, I recorded a version of that song. Oh, okay. Gotcha, yeah. The one that you're listening to is the one I recorded on my own up here in a 4-4 rock beat. Yeah. But the one in head, at Head Gap had a 3-4 kind of, there was a pedal steel player in there, super drunk dude. But he's an Australian guy, so he was able to play fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder who that was. <laughs> I forgot his name. <laughs> and when you guys recorded your record there, yeah, I, I did. Um, we did we did the album there, and we did a couple of other like on, on the the first. Um, oh no, the second EP that I did, we we did some there, and then I also recorded. Um, uh, I play guitar in my my girlfriend's band, and 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 we did her album there as well. So it's just around the corner from my house, you know. So it's <laughs> it's close. So let me ask. So when you did the songs there, did you record the? Have you played the songs out like that uh, with these fellas? We um we spent like a week before, um, and I showed them. The songs. I'm a bit leave it, leave things to the last minute. Um, so I was still finishing them, trying to get them all perfect. But but then, um, so yeah, the week before we went in the studio, um, we kind of took time to to try and figure out how they were supposed to go. So it was pretty, which I I, I quite like doing it like that. It, it feels you know everyone's just feeling feeling how it goes. But um, it can be kind of stressful. I was sitting there trying to finish lyrics and. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's like um, it's almost like like the fact that they didn't kind of know it and hadn't and were kind of they still like especially the drummer this this fella named Dave Muddy. Yeah, Dave Moody. Dave Moody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a nice feel. It does feel like like he's ramshackling his way through it in a in a in a good way. Like like yeah. maybe that's why because he like well I better I'm still listening to how it goes and I think it, we're gonna do this here. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Totally. And they're such they're such good players. They're so tight. Those two guys. Um, yeah. Dave and Bones and so it's kind of good to keep them on their toes. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what I tell them anyway. Um, cause otherwise it just sounds, you know, far too polished and perfect. Right. Right. Yeah. You're left-handed. Yes. That's weird. <laughs> okay. Next, <laughs> next question. I always wanted to be a left-handed player. I thought it was so cool. Really? Yeah. It's really cool. Like the guitars in reverse, you know? Yeah. I guess it's, you know, something, a point of difference. <laughs> it just looks cool on st I always think it looked cool. It's like, wow, man, they're left-handed. That's so awesome. I even actually tried to play a guitar left-handed. Like, sometimes if I get, I don't have any good ideas because I'm playing the same guitar with the same strings, I will actually retune something, you know, differently. I'm sure a lot of people do that. And one time I retuned it opposite ways and then tried oh, to flip yeah. it all over. It was it was ridiculous. Uh, I yeah, you come up with some real nice um, some really nice things sometimes. Like oh, when I play funny. another guitar upside down, it's yeah, it's yeah. I read you cool. said that. Yes, yeah, you said that you can. It's weird to go. You can go both ways like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, the song title I'd like to ask you about. One of my favorite song titles, anyway is nobody really cares if you don't go to the party. Uh -huh. My question to you is, did your girlfriend tell you that one night when you were bitching and moaning? <laughs> um, no, I think that's a that's an internal thought to myself, okay. you know, <laughs> to try and... Um, <laughs> to t <laughs> I'm very in a very indecisive person, so... Um, and I, yeah, I, I, I kind of s will um, we'll dwell on, on, on things like that, so I think that's a... That's one of my own comments, <laughs> my brain comments. That's, that's good. I like that one. I imagined you're somebody waiting for you. So nobody really cares if you go, Courtney. <laughs> now then, um, what was it like when you first heard your voice in the studio? Oh, that's a good question. Um, as in the very first time, like yeah. years ago. Um, well, I did a lot of recording um, on my own at home. Oh, that's not really the same. In a in a proper studio. Yeah. Um, 
I um, was doing this song and I was and I did a scratch scratch vocal and um and and you know didn't care about it because was like I'll come back to that and then I tried to do the the proper one you know with the fancy mm-hmm. microphone and all that stuff mm-hmm. and um and I was really nervous and scared because you know I wanted to get it right and spent ages doing it and just hated it it was mm-hmm. kind of shaky and and all that and and ended up going back to the first one right <laughs> the, the scratch vocal which was like into a 50 50 uh seven or something and just sounded really natural and the other one sounded really fake yeah but um but yeah it's a weird it's a weird feeling hearing your yourself recorded even hearing yeah. yourself talking it's so embarrassing yeah <laughs> yeah I remember hearing my voice and just thinking oh my god this is so so horrible and I remember when that when um, the engineers would le- need to like check a level or something or listen to something and they would solo up my voice and I would just, it would like, it would hurt my stomach to hear my voice soloed up in that thin sort of yeah sounding way. I just wanted to know if you felt had. Yeah. Well, was, like, do you get more nervous when other people are around listening or then? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just, it's, yeah, I think it didn't matter. It was, it was, no, I don't think it mattered. <laughs> I mean, it would have been, it would have been more acutely painful if there were more people, you know, mm. do, listening, but it, it, it was still painful if it was just me and the engineer. But that was at the very beginning. And then I had to get used to the idea that that is, you know, yeah. part of it. And it's going to sound better, you know. So let's talk about your pedal stool illustration in the in the booklet. Okay. <laughs> okay. In the booklet of your CD, you have illustrations of chairs. Chairs. Yes. You do studies, your drawings of chairs. Mm-hmm. Now they're all very nice chairs, Courtney. What I'd like to ask is how you could possibly think that somebody can use the pedals on the pedal stool chair <laughs> when it's obviously the place where your butt goes. It's too hard to get your thighs around that. I mean. <laughs> Do you have a different variation of that? Well, um, <laughs> that's the uh, that's the irony of that silly little picture. <laughs> oh, you knew that that couldn't work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was uh, I had just read a book on um, Leonardo da Vinci and um, and and been looking at some of his drawings and his his designs and creations and stuff. And, um, and I don't know, I just, I, I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny kind of sitting there pedaling, not getting anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, some sort of metaphor for life or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it, I, I was thinking it's like a unicycle that doesn't go anywhere, but you would have to have a different seat, Courtney. Oh, I get you. Yeah. It's like a bar stool. But I don't think the pet, can you, have you, you tried would, anything like that? No, I didn't put it into practice. <laughs> it was all theory, <laughs> all theory. It's, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense at all. You're the first person that's brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> interesting that I'm beginning to like notice when like there's a few female artists that I'm beginning now I'm sure guys do this too but I'm beginning to like a lot of female artists and I noticed that you do this this uh the Fiona Apple does this and I'm beginning to notice this about certain female Certain artists that I'm beginning to feel like I'd like to know what's going on with them is that they have an OCD about them. Yeah. 
and they've actually talked about it. I'm beginning to put it together, and I'm wondering if I'm liking the fact that they get OCD about things and how much I like that and whether it's because I like it because I have it too, you know, in some varying degrees. And also, or do I like it just because having the OCD brings people to a different place in what they're working on that normal people wouldn't go there because it's, you know, basically, a you know, brain disease. Um, yeah. And I'm kind of liking that I, you know, and I'm liking what comes out of that, you know, because it's interesting kind of. So I've been thinking about that. Yeah, I get what you mean. It's, um, I, um, like, what do you think your main ACD ness is? I get locked in um, layering and and looking at things in a different way, and I get down into a thought, and just into a thought, you know. And, and what usually grabs is something about how something is going to lay down, or and I check the different ways that it could go and stuff like that. Like, like you going into the studio real quick like that. I that that's would probably be a good idea for me. Yeah, right. So you, do you think you overthink it or you just yes. like maybe that's a but maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> but I enjoy yeah, I enjoy it. So yeah. I know yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's the reason I um sometimes force myself not to because I know that I um I can very easily go into that kind of um that that spiral. <laughs> right. Um yeah, and I think that's it it took me so long to record my first thing because um because of exactly that I kept demoing stuff over and over and and like fixing it up and and um and and layering like 20 of my own vocals and <laughs> you know, just like mental mental stuff so then I, I I tried to turn it exactly um exactly the other way around and and see if that if that worked which is kind of it, yeah it's kind of hard to to let go of it. Yeah. If that's what your, you know, yeah. your thing is. Yeah. Is it part of your lyrics that you say you speak French or something? Do you? Backwards? Oh. <laughs> Do you speak um, French? I um, I learned French in primary school and a bit of high school and it's, no, I can't speak French. <laughs> okay. Uh, very, very basically I can. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's in my best French. That's the lyric, which is pretty average. I know. I know how to speak. Um, I know I can do an imitation of an English, of an English person speaking French. Go on. Avez-vous une cigarette, s'il vous plaît? <laughs> now, do you want to hear a a rich person speaking French? A rich English rich person English speaking French? Yes. 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 I say, do you have a cigarette, please, sir? <laughs> The poster image that was hanging in your grandma's bathroom that you took the quote from. Yes. Um, for your album. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I sit and think, sometimes I just sit. Now, what was the image on the poster that you were staring at? Was it a cat hanging on or something? What was going on? It was, no, it was similar to those. It was, um, it was this little cartoon dog, um, with a floppy straw hat on with a flower in the hat. <laughs> um, looking kind of, you know, a bit like dopey. Um, and, 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 uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure my grandma's told me since, cause she, she was like read it in the newspaper that, that that was the title and, and, um, cause I hadn't told her yet. And, and she was like, I think she said that her, grandmother drew it or painted it or something like that or her mum oh, I don't know <laughs> really 
Yeah, so it was kind of cute, and she, she, she was really happy that I that I named the album that. Ah, yeah, it was really sweet. Well, I've pulled some other A. A. Milne. How do you say this name? Her, its name, A. A. Milne. Milne? Yeah, Milne. I've pulled some other quotes. In case okay. you need a, in case you need a, a title for your next record. Oh, good. Um. <clears throat> Weeds are flowers, too, once you get to know them. <laughs> I like that one. Um, if one man is called a liar, one may as well make an effort to deserve the name. That's not a good album title. No, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's one that kind of sounds like volume two of your, of your album. This okay. is by the same artist mm -hmm. did you ever stop to think and forget to start again oh god <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's the next album thank you <laughs> lock it in <laughs> do you what are you doing tonight do you have sound check um yeah we got sound check um at some point this afternoon <laughs> You're just you're just you're just walking around exhausted, aren't you? Pretty much. Pretty much. But you're, you know, you know You appear to be you appear to be a very affable young lady, but really you're actually a raging personality, but actually you're just so tired. People just think that you're just really she's really easy to get along with. Yeah. They think I'm real <laughs> I'm I'm real chilled out, but I'm really just asleep walking. <laughs> <laughs> you're in a rage, but you're <laughs> too tired to actually exhibit any of that. <laughs> Maybe I'll go for a swim. That's always nice. <sighs> yeah? Yeah. That's calming. Yeah. Do you, do you do swimming? No, uh-uh. No? No, no. I walk. That's it. Oh, yeah. That's good, too. Yeah. yeah. Do you walk with headphones or without? I'll walk with the headphones, but I'll play an audio book. And the one I've been listening to is this one about World War I, and it's just crazy, so I'll just be walking along. But it's not that good of a book. It's I like nonfiction, and I tend to like uh, uh, war fiction, nonfiction for some reason. I don't know why. What have you been reading? What are you reading? What's your book on tape? Um, I wish I should get it. A book on tape. I've been reading, um, you know, those little books you can get that like um, pull apart albums. Um, it's like an essay on an album. I'm reading one on, on, on horses, Patty Smith's horses. Oh, really? What's it say? Something interesting? Um, yeah, it, a lot of, lot of words. It makes me feel kind of dumb um, just how it's written. It's very intellectual. Lots of big, big words. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's I'm pretty easy to confuse. So, but it's yeah. good. It's interesting. You know, I like knowing, I like knowing, um, all of the all the backstory around around things like that. It's it's interesting. It kind of paints a, a bigger picture of, you know, the music. These fellas that you're bringing around with you, yeah, are they are not? You're not a band, so when they go back home, are you going to be able to call them and they're going to go, yeah, yeah, we'll be right over? Or they're just going to go, you're such a drag on tour, lose my number. You know <laughs> yeah, they probably will do that. No, <laughs> um, they uh, they're kind of. I don't know. We're, we're kind of like best friends, and Dave lives just around the corner. He lives in my old share house, oh. Oh, and. That's um, nice. So sometimes we rehearse there still and um and the neighbors get angry and right um and uh they both kind of have other jobs but we all like making music so kind of put that first <laughs> yeah 
But then sometimes we rehearse at Bakehouse too. Right. Um, or Bones works at this this pub, so we uh, he's he's got the keys, so we can go in and use the PA and. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. Well, I've got I've kind of run through my questions. Some of them are. Oh, let's see. Which guys play the signs out? I asked that. Were they arranged in the studio? The lefty. The drummers feel. Oh, what's your most embarrassing worst song you ever wrote? What's your most embarrassing line you ever wrote? You had that ever written? Oh, I I um I went back to mum and dad's the other month and I and I and I brought home a CD of demos mm-hmm. and um and everything on it was was what you just asked. <laughs> <laughs> there was I think there was five or six songs that I recorded when I was uh, eight. Teen or nineteen? Yeah, and um, yeah. I have one man, kind of tape like that. There are some serious feelings in those songs mm-hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> that are just yeah, pretty pretty out there. Just so <sighs> so earnest, but you know I liked listening to them, even though it was really cringe cringy. Yeah, um, I can't think of a line. All of the lines were just so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have one? I'm th- I'm thinking that I do, but I think when I say it, it won't sound so bad. But it re- it really, for some reason, to, it really it really bothered me. For I mean, there's lots of lines, but one, I guess it's not so cringy as I think it's just it's just not good. It lives despite the knives internal. I just like. That's so bad. I don't know. I just don't like it at all. It sounds. It just sounds really cryptic. Yeah, it sounds like it a cryptic just, crossword clue. Right. It. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just. I don't know. <laughs> now, there is one thing I haven't asked you here, and it's: Do you have any advice for girls or guys wanting to get in a band or play any an instrument? Um. I was thinking of asking you that. I um. I uh, I think I would just say to to just do it and not think what what um what anyone else cares or or, or whatever anyone else thinks, which is really hard, obviously, a lot of the time. But um, that I feel like that holds you back. It held me back a lot. It's, you just got to go and play stuff and make stupid mistakes and and uh and do it <laughs> i think that seems like the most sensible answer do you have any old things up on youtube from when you were like 18 playing in a little pub that we can look at snicker uh... at <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably i played in a cover band when i was 18 um I don't know if that's even on YouTube. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I'm so I'm I'm so glad I was before that because, damn. But I, there's plenty up there that's damn enough. Yeah, so. I'm sure I'm sure I've got I've got plenty. Yeah. <laughs> do you drink? Um. Yeah, I do drink. It's um. You, you do you not drink? I quit. My last drink was in two thousand and two. That's uh, that sounds sensible. <laughs> it's funny. I've I've had this conversation a lot with with friends. Obviously, just because of the the um amount of, the of drinking, <laughs> just the amount of of drinking that's around music, right? Which which can obviously be troublesome. I'm, I think I'm a bit over drinking. Yeah. Do you like beer? Um, not really. What drink do you drink? I've I've started just drinking wine. Mm. Red or white? I, white. Because mm. I used to just drink whiskey all the time, and that's just like oh. dangerous. Do you get mean or do you get smiley and quiet? Um, I think I've got, 
I've got a couple of couple of personalities. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then it's it's mean. Um, <laughs> like recently we're in LA and and I had a, a very bad day consisting of lots of things and um and I got mean. I jumped into the drums and <laughs> tried to break everything. <laughs> and that was uh that was probably mean mean Courtney. Yeah. But most of the time I'm just smiling, I think. Right. That's my impression anyway. It's right. Probably, probably smiling like an idiot. Right. Did you bust the drums? Are those his drums? No. No, they weren't Dave's drums. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think I, I busted them. I busted my head. That hurt. I hit it on a cymbal. But um but yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing anything silly like that. We just talked about this. Jim McPherson, the drummer Jim McPherson, the drummer, came over the other night and we were just talking about it, it was an amp show in Dublin, Ireland, where it was no, it was Belfast. It was just so like, I don't remember this, but I grabbed the kick drum and after the show and I handed it out to the audience and there's a picture <laughs> of the kick drum just going toward his kick drum. And it was his own gear because we were recording over there in Ireland. Oh. So th there's a picture of the kick drum above the crowd as it was making its way out the exit. And I Did had to go, hey, no, come on, we need that kick drum back. And, of course, I was in a blackout. I don't remember this at all. I was drinking a lot with the amps, so... Yeah, right. Yeah, so I do remember doing stupid stuff with drums, like giving them away while we were on stage. <laughs> I've definitely uh, given my guitar away just kind of for fun, for people to strum, but then every now and then someone tries to walk out with it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always the friendliest looking people too that do that shit, right? I know. Uh -huh. they, can, they can get it they can get away with it. What are you doing tonight? Practice. Drummer's coming over. Mm-hmm. And then I recorded his drums upstairs on I have a little task cam, 16 track, reel to reel, half inch, and I recorded it on his drums, and I'm going to put some guitar on it and then I'll hear what I, I'm supposed to be making up words for it. And I, I have a nice melody line for it, but, you know, I was on a mushroom trip in 1999 and I found this old cassette and it sounds so cool. It was the only time I've been high on mushrooms. I got so high, <laughs> like back to Africa high. I had was sitting in a fire, near a fireplace and I decided I was going to tape myself. I was going to come up with some incredible music. And I remember before I got high, I started playing on the four track. I had a guitar. It's just me in this house. And then for the next, you know, 90 minutes on tape, all I hear is just me going, ah, <laughs> ah. Anyway. That, that, that could be worth a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but the beginning before I got high, there was actually something kind of cool I did. Story of my life there. <laughs> do you like what what do you think of that old kind of you know slightly romantic idea of you know needing to to um to be in some sort of state to to create I figured, you know, I heard somebody say, like, that, you know, the doors of perception and, and drugs can open the doors of perception. But then, you know, once the door is open, there's really no need to keep doing the same drug to keep opening the door. I mean, the door's open. Mm. So, the, so I kind of, yeah, I kind of see how it probably would be very effective the first time. And it could be a God consciousness that was, that it got introduced, you know, what we stumbled onto some mushrooms and that's how we got gained a consciousness as, you know, ancestors. And, but it, yeah, I don't know about keeping, you know, doing keeping it. it up. Yeah. And also the, the quote where the, uh, it was a, a musician in, and in the room there were drugs and then, a drug addict and in the room there were some 
music instruments, you know. Yeah. And that the difference between that. Yeah. I um do you know um there's this Australian painter called Brett Whiteley? Right. Um and um I remember reading um in a book about him that that he would um you know, he he thought he created his his best uh, stuff at, at, at this point of being drunk. So he'd he'd basically drink a bottle of something in one go, and um and and have this window of ten minutes of amazing something. <laughs> right, right. And and then obviously what came next was 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 whatever, not good. But um, right. I thought it was interesting. And then obviously he he stopped. He got sober at some point, I think. Right. But um, I think it became such a thing. Like he thought he could only create in that in that window. Yeah. So he, you know, he like it was a necessity. Right. Mm. Do, do you think that? No, nah, I don't. I, I don't. I don't think that for me yeah. anyway. Yeah. It's probably just one of those like things that you. Convince you or your your mind convinces yourself of. Yeah, to keep using drugs, mm. drinking. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I've got one question for you, uh-huh. um, which is it's not really that interesting, but um, I was wondering because I just turned, not just turned, I'm 27, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I was wondering what you were doing when you were 27, what you were listening to, what your biggest thing was, your biggest obsession. I remember turning 27 and having serious thoughts about being 27. I would talk to people about, my mind is so crazy at 27. I love turning 27. Mm. I remembered my, I felt like my mind clicked in in a way that it hadn't before. And it's, again, it's one of the things about the world history and stuff. And I was able to figure out things like, you know, the kind of like, like, oh, so the Boxer Rebellion. So I could place that kind of like, not specifically, but like kind of place it kind of along a timeline, like the timeline of the, of the history of of man kind of clicked into place more. Mm. I remember it. I re- I remember having a, a better overall view and a better perspective. And it just it happened when I was twenty seven, and I thought that was weird. And I asked my friends if they felt the same way when they turned twenty seven, if if their brain didn't widen just a bit in a, in a strange way. Do you know? Yes. <gasps> Did it they did, say? Um. I don't know. People probably just went, yeah, sure, Kim. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's normally the, the answer I get. <laughs> what, do you think that you're feeling something diff- like uh, like your brain is clicking weird in a good way? Or in a um, bad? No, I think in a good way. It It's hard to tell. I think I, I have such extreme, uh, extreme, you know, differences. But I think every year I have some sort of, you know, I think I have some sort of revelation. And obviously because now is now, I think this is a big one. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. That's, I that, that's a good word. I thought it was revelatory. I thought that there was like things revealed itself to me in my brain that was like, oh, that's what that is. And it, well, it's just kind of the, it, it's just stuff, man. I don't, can't even, a lot of it had to do with timelines like I could place things in a in a linear way before and 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 kind of understand like you know I don't I don't know well like, I there, mean, there is supposed to be something some sort of isn't there like a moon Saturn's Saturn's return something the moon coming round something something <laughs> on, twi- on like when somebody hits twenty seven or something you mean yeah. Stand on my own two feet. I'm breathing, but I'm wheezing. 
Do you like Australia? Yeah, very much, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty it's pretty good, I guess. I bet you miss it. Um yeah, I do kinda I miss it. I miss I miss friends and, you know, friends and, and Jen, but um Has she been up to visit you in America? She's uh she's coming in a couple of weeks. We're gonna take a little holiday between between tours. Cause otherwise it's, you know, crazy. Mm-hmm. Being away, how, how do you like touring? Oh. You know, I, uh, I I don't mind it at all. I some yeah. people like Josephine, the bass player. She gets she doesn't like it. Yeah. She's English, though. You know how the English <laughs> are. So she like she really likes her shower, and she really just doesn't. She just doesn't take to it. Maybe she's better nowadays, though. Mm. But I just turn on an engine and I'll fall asleep, and I don't. You know, I, and I'm from Dayton, Ohio, so it's not like I'm really missing a lot back here, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's easy to go off and you could do something. It was really fascinating when I first left Ohio and the States. It was really great to, for, to first, you know, land in London for the first time and see things, yeah, historical things. No, it's to see things um, that, um, to hear people talk in a different way accent and to, and to, you know just see the different ways oh that's what you call candy bar that's my mar you know yeah 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 stuff like that it's a good perspective and then what? going on to politics and reading like you know oh their paper looks different than our paper wow we really have a different slant wow yeah totally I, I find all that stuff really interesting yeah because yeah w- w- when's the first time that you even like left your home oh hi like when you first went to London or something? There was a Pixie Story Muses tour in 1980, probably seven maybe, or it could have been eight. I don't know. 87 or 88, some one of those two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was really fun. We had a great time throwing Muses. Have you ever heard of that band? Um, I've he- I think I've heard of them. I haven't listened. I haven't listened. They're, they're very good. They're, they're a very good band. Sh- they've got um, some good songs. What's the best song? <laughs> right Album. now, right now, the Hate My Way, I've th- been thinking about because it was played on um, American Horror Story and it was a really good scene and that song got played on that sh- TV show. So Hate My Way is a really good one. Um, there's another one, a Chain, I think. Was one that I like a lot. Um, just get the first couple of, first couple of them, or, yeah. or you know, look at the first couple of them, stream whatever. I'm writing them down. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Right. There you have go. you ever heard of this Mika, the Mika, Mika Chu and the Shapes? Have you ever heard of them? McCoskey. Oh yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Have you ever met that? Nah, I haven't. Female, I haven't. Mika, Micah, Levi. No, me neither. <laughs> I like her very much. When did you first leave Australia? Um, two years ago. Um, when I I went to New York to do CMJ. Um. And that was the first time I'd I'd left, and um, and then since then have have kind of spent majority of my time overseas. Wow! So it's yeah, it's it, and and I don't know. It it feels it's it's just a because it's such a far way from yeah. Australia. You know, yeah, so. it really is, isn't it? it? I mean, it really is. It feels different. It feels far away. Yeah. So. Yeah, all this like the last two years has just been so um, so cr- like so many new experiences and you know yeah. <laughs> sounds and smells and 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 sights and and people. It's it's like sensory overload. You seem like you're doing very well, but you can't possibly be doing that well. I mean, of course, it would have to affect you in some way, but there you are, affable and 
pleasant and it do always doing a good good job the song sounding good and so <laughs> so what's up <laughs> i'm actually uh a robot. <laughs> I knew you were going to say <laughs> Yeah. I think you must be a sociopath. And none yeah. of this means anything. Just don't tell, don't tell anyone that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I kind of often um, wait for something to go wrong. <laughs> before, you've, before you... Well, just, I think that's just how I am. Compose. Just... You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm. I try not to have too too many high expectations because I just. That's probably very helpful, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if it's pessimistic or, or or just yeah helpful. Right. It could be right size, you know. It's it's not going to be the best show. It's not going to be the worst show. It's just a show. Yeah, maybe it's a, it's a it's a good balance to have. But, um, yeah, because I do, you know, like we were saying before, I do overthink stuff. So if I, yeah, get on that on that kind of wavelength, then I'll just kind of have some sort of breakdown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do, you, how do you go without, like, you're still kind of, well, you are older now, so that might be helpful. But how do you get so, like, you know, you're not, um, I'm, I'm right. I'm right because I'm saying it and that's the way I'm thinking. So I must be right because, uh, you know, these are my songs and I'm playing and it's my band. So I must be right. So that's what's going on. So I'm right. I'm not only right in this, I'm also right about the order and whether <laughs> you should like cheeseburgers or not. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just not, it's not who I am. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. I don't think. I don't know how do you how how do you stay sane in an insane world? I don't think I did. Mm. But I, I lasted for quite a while before yeah. before I you know to like nineteen ninety nine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but even now like how do you you know what like what 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 gets you through your your days I don't know it's weird isn't it the yawning day just sitting there and having to feel fill it and like oh my god I mean I don't know how people do it maybe they do it because they have kids and they have jobs and I really I probably should need to get busy well but I I do care for my parents so there's that so yeah yeah I guess I mean do you kind of are you (laughs) people are gonna want to like (laughs) Are we getting deep? <laughs> I, I I know. I think we're getting super depressing. Though. They're gonna wet. I'm like forgetting a, that people are gonna listen to this. I thought we were so just like, <laughs> yeah. I thought we were just having a moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was actually looking at the the your video, and I was gonna actually write the time down of exactly what you were thinking. Um, oh, I have two, two, two more questions that I didn't want to ask you at first because I thought I was giving you too much shit, but I will. Um, <laughs> we're friends now. Uh, yeah, Go exactly. First of all, let me ask you this. What is the inspiration for the creaking door guitar solo, other than a creaking door? It's on Avant Gardner. Yeah. And it's your, is that your guitar solo? Are you going to say that that's yours, Courtney? Or is that, is that that fella's? No, that's, that would be Dan, I reckon, if it's. Um... Oh, tell Dan. <laughs> Amazing creaking door guitar solo. It's like, <laughs> that's the take we got to keep. That one. I mean, that's avant-garde even for me. <laughs> that guitar solo. It's just like, 
Wow. I'm trying to think what part, is it in the middle bit? The it, like yes. the. Yes. It really sounds like a good. I mean, I can. I know it's a guitar solo because I can hear it's a guitar. But if some, my mother walked in the room, well, she wouldn't walk in the room. But if somebody else walked in the room, they would think that it's a creaking door. It's like. He's, he's a pretty, pretty, pretty talented guy. <laughs> it could also be a tra there's tram lines on that, on that song. Oh, is there really? Because we re I actually recorded the vocals in his bedroom. Um, after we yeah, had that's what it was. It could be that maybe he um because he mixed it so maybe he he um we were trying to make make a bit of weird shit happen. So maybe he just distorted some trams, tram bells. <laughs> irony, door. irony doesn't last. Irony can't go through history. You can't look back and go, oh, they did that ironically. It doesn't work. I've tried it. <laughs> um, okay, so the other thing is the clown. Okay, so I, will, I was almost going to actually write down the, the time, but there's this one. What were you thinking? Um, when you were looking at the camera, <laughs> thing, I'm sure you were probably just hung over. You were, you were looking at the camera during, right around the existentialist rap. Um, am I, am I on the, am I yeah. on the ride? Like, yes, is yes. it going up and down? Yes, yes, yes. Do you know what I'm thinking in that exact moment? What? Was, um, I hope that, um, I, that the cameraman doesn't die because <laughs> he was about to die. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I, I was trying to continue acting <laughs> in the only way I know how to do, which is not act, cast myself as um, <laughs> faceless, emotionless characters. <laughs> um, and the, 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 the ride that we were on, kind of first of all just went around in a circle and then um, when we were like, okay, let's do the take, it started going, um, you know, up and to the side and up in the air and, and really fast and, <laughs> and and he was just sitting there with this heavy camera kind of bracing himself and I could just see it. I could see it all unfolding. God. He goes flying off during the filming of my video. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, so that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that would be, that would be really, <laughs> really sad to have somebody dying during my music video. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> great, great um, fodder for the, for the character. <laughs> well, now we know. <laughs> so, oh, would you ever do any acting? Would you like to do that? Are you... I I find it I find it quite interesting. Like I, f I find it fun, but I think I don't have the nerves for it. I I, I get I get really self conscious and, and terrified. And and I did a bit of acting in in school, and I would just forget my lines and start crying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I just just so ner nervous. Right. So, Shy. I can sing songs. Like I've gotten okay at doing that without crying. But yeah, acting, <laughs> acting's different. <laughs> Would be fun though. Would How you do it? Oh, acting. Um, I guess I I could. It depends on what it what what it would be yeah it would be fun <laughs> i think that it's probably super boring i think you sit in your trailer for like you know you know it's just like doing a music video in the 90s it's just a little snippet of what it would be which is like set up is like three quarters of the day or something like that and the day yeah. before and then the actual scene is like not long and then I don't know it seems pretty tedious yeah yeah you're right <laughs> I don't know I've had fun doing the few I've done but they have been fucking long days <laughs> yeah yeah I did one where um I had to look like I'd 
come out of a lake that I'd been flailing around in. And, Which uh, was that, the tennis one or the... Uh, oh, no, it's called Kim's Caravan. I don't think I saw that one. It's um, it's an epic little short film. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I had to lie there and my friend um, tipped, had to tip water on me, you know, so I looked like I was wet. I'd come out of the water. Right. And, and it was just freezing cold and in the middle of the bush, kind of shivering, <laughs> trying to look at the camera. <laughs> yeah, it looks good there. Yeah. I don't think I saw that one. Oh, that's one of my favourite songs on the album. Yeah, I don't I do not remember well, who's the who's Kim? Uh Kim's my friend. I I I, I um I stayed at her caravan when I was trying to write songs for the album. Oh, did you? Yeah, so I, I kind of locked myself away down there uh, just for this one weekend and, and, and yeah, went into a, a dark place. Satellites on the ceiling I can see Jesus and she's smiling at me All I want to say is I have to make sure to give you my email before we get done or whatever, however that happens. Yeah, for sure. I wonder yeah. if we'll ever meet each other. I don't think you'll ever go to Ohio so or, or Dayton. Do, do people, like, go there on tours? No, not Dayton. They can, they sometimes they'll go home through, um, not really, no. There's some cities here, Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Columbus, but usually people go to Chicago. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, ha- so how far are you from Chicago? Driving. Six hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's all right. I like Chicago. Yeah, and it's an easy drive. So, um, speaking of... Um, if you can't, if I can't see you, you can't see me. Mm. Is that from a roadkill in Australia, or is that from here in the states? That yeah, it's um yeah Australian. Right. It's um yeah the drive the drive from Melbourne to Sydney, um and and yeah just saw the the roadkill and the the sign on the back of the trucks and yeah. But it's kind of I don't know the chorus is nice kind of works in both. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I like it. Have you seen that that video? Yeah, that was cute. Who did that? Um, ah, oh, this 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 guy did it. Um, he's amazing. I because I kind of had the idea and basically told him what I what I saw, and he and he just totally made wow. it come to life. Wow, it's incredible. Someone someone emailed me the other day and said. Can you please um, make a, a a kid-friendly version? I think they were a bit oh. angry. <laughs> he, he sounded he sounded kind of angry. Can you make a kid-friendly version? But I said I, I that's said I wanted kid it. friendly. I thought that was a kid. That's not what what makes well, it, it not because it's uh it's it's pretty it's pretty bloody. <laughs> I said I wanted lots of blood, like. The, the humans the humans dying on the on the road getting getting hit by the cars and stuff oh I just remember the kangaroo so yeah <laughs> that's right yeah so you know it might it might be a bit kill bill right <laughs> I have one question that I haven't asked you mm-hmm how did you get help from the government? Oh, like uh, grants? Yeah. Um, it says it on that th- the CD thing. The, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we um pretty lucky um, to, to, to have like a bit of um, uh, art, artist grants in Australia. Um, but I think recently they've they've just been cut. The whoever's in charge, um, I don't know, decided to do what politicians do and 
fuck it all up. But um, for a moment, it was it was pretty good. And and uh, you know, you you do a proposal and say what you were gonna do and create, and um, and they'd give you a little chunk of money, which was like, you know, I wouldn't have been able to to make my first um, CD without some of that money. So. Did you write in your idea or did you have to give them the music so they could hear it and decide whether it was worthy of something they wanted to support? Yeah, I think I think a bit of both. Like right. you, you give them, you've, yeah, you've got to show them what you sound like and but also, you know, how, how you're going to execute it and what it means to the, you know, cultural right. blah, blah, blah and, right. you know, what they'll get back from it essentially. Right. Just so you don't go home and like snort meth with it the whole <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was yeah, pretty lucky to get that actually. Cause from from what I've heard talking to other people touring and stuff, like it's a pretty rare um you know, opportunity. How how are you like? Who's paying for your hotel tonight? Is that all that coming out of your own tour money? Do you get money from your label and stuff? Tour yeah, stuff, whatever. I, tour I think support. um tour support. I think I don't know. I just run. I run everything as a as a company. Like my my I'm my own company. Right. And then everything. Um. Yeah, I guess it all kind of filters in from everywhere, record sales and tour income and right. all that stuff. Now, who do you have watching that, Miss Missy? Um, <laughs> I, I, a manager, great manager. Okay. Where do we meet these people? Where, where did I meet? Where did I meet him? Uh-huh. Um... In Melbourne. Mm. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Yeah. Clever guy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> now, I want you to talk to him now. Give him the, <laughs> the strong word. <laughs> yeah, put him on. Let me talk to him. <laughs> um, Is he there? No, he's not here. He's in Melbourne. Oh. <laughs> I like that you're tapping. Yeah, I've got a pen in my mouth and I'm doing <laughs> office stuff like I'm, you know, somebody. Did you hear about this Tame Impala thing? Where I Pav did, yeah. Yes, I just, yes. I was, I was really, I've been been following that. Mm -hmm. It is a, I mean, ever since growing up, all you hear is music industry, dangerous, you know, bad yeah. career, yeah. steal all your money, people take right. advantage, blah, blah, right. blah. right. So <laughs> I've tried to uh I've tried to educate myself as much as I can because I think it's important to obviously. Mm -hmm. Um but it's still pretty, you know, scary. <laughs> it's it's hard because there's a lot of inf it's a lot of information and especially when when I'm like like for me to do what I'm doing requires a totally different set of skills of what I'm actually then supposed to additionally do about what I'm doing. You know what I'm mm. saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it's a, it's a lot of work and that's where the yeah, getting somebody to having to, somebody just Tim Duncan, it's a, he's an NBA na, uh, basketball player. Mm. He just got, I just saw him in the news as, uh, his, um, I, I forgot who investment advisor took twenty million from him or something, oh and he was just, and he's just coming out saying, you know, I'm just learned from this, and I usually watch what's going on, but I kind of, you know, didn't put my keep my eye on it, and but he's made like two hundred and twenty million, so he's he's like, you know, it's a chunk of change, but wow, but it, it just it happens in more than just music. I think it happens, you know, people have to watch, I guess. Yeah. It's a scary thought. I'm not very, yeah, I guess you just got to learn how to trust people. I don't really trust people. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good thing, I guess. Yeah, it's, I guess. It's, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any pets? My, par I, my parents have two cats. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, but I stay with them, so, so... 
yeah, I feed them. I've got a cat. I bet you miss the cat. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I Skype with Jen and 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 Bubbles, the cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you go home, does Bubbles ignore you now and it's like Jen's cat? Um yeah, but she can't she doesn't last long. She always goes back to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's nice. I mean, it's it's different than when I was first touring and stuff and leaving for so long. Now you've I've got you've got Skype and you can really stay in touch. Yeah, I guess so. I'd, it's yeah, I guess it it probably makes a huge difference. It's still so it's a hard it's a hard thing to maintain. Yeah, it is communication. Yeah. It could be a good thing or it could just put a face to everything that you're mad at and then just spill it out right there on the screen. So <laughs> that thing. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple more A.A. A. Milne quotes that you can use for your album title. Oh, yeah. Oh, what was the one that, uh, that, that I had liked before? Do you ever stop to think and forget to start again? Oh, yeah, that's good. Mm. All right, give me more. Um... Let's see. For an album title, let me go with this one. Rivers know this. There is no hurry. We shall get there someday. Oh, that's nice. That's that's calm. Yes. Dr. Zeus has good ones. You reminded me of Dr. Seuss, actually. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that's that's cool. I like Dr. Zeus. Yeah. Does he have things like this, you were saying? Like what? Like quotes? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, um, I know there's some there's some great ones. Just such good kind of those little one-liners. Yeah. I can't think of any now. <laughs> Here's your... I, I, luckily, I have plenty here. Here's your next <laughs> album cover title. <laughs> what I say is that... If a man really likes potatoes, he must be a pretty decent sort of fellow. What is that? <laughs> That's one of the A.A. A. Milne quotes. <laughs> That's like a B-Sides album. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally the B-Side album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hey, this is a bummer, but I think I have to go. I've got lobby call in 10 minutes. Oh, my God. To get to sound check. Oh, my God. I was having so much fun. Me too. It was really great talking with you. Yeah, you too. Tell the boys I said hello. I will. I'm just looking, just looking. And that's it. Afterwards, those two exchanged email addresses, and maybe they'll stay in touch. Who knows? This is Michael Azarad, editor-in-chief of the Talk House. For more Talk House music podcasts, and for some great writing by musicians about music, please visit thetalkhouse.com slash music, or just subscribe to this podcast at iTunes. Thanks to our engineer, Elia Einhorn, and thanks to Mark Yoshizumi for recording the conversation. <laughs>